What's up, Western Oregon? Episode three of the TD Show. We're back, and this is an extremely special one. We got Adam Fugit in the building. He's about to make his third appearance in the UFC. Does that set in for you? I mean, three appearances. Many people don't get the opportunity to step into that UFC cage one time in their lives. They fight their entire lives. You're about to make your third appearance. How does that feel? I mean, it's a, it's a dream come true. It's a surreal feeling, and I'm excited, you know, to get in there and show everybody what I'm, I'm worth again. Yeah, it's going to be a big-time fight 100%. in Vancouver. I mean, we are pumped for this. We got people at the station uh, making the trip up to Vancouver to come see you. A lot of excitement around this one. UFC 289. It's going to be on June 10th. You're going to fight Mike Malott, and uh, he's a pretty legit opponent you're going to be uh, stepping into the cage with, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, what are your initial impressions of what he can do? Um, he's a guy that uh, is super athletic. Um, he, he moves very well. Um, he sits down, he throws hard. I mean, if you ask yeah. him, he, he hits harder than me. So, you know, um, we're going to find out on Saturday. And, um, yeah, you know, he's kind of very similar to me, right? So mm -hmm. it makes for a tricky matchup. He uh, does a lot of things well. I do a lot of, th a lot of things well. And I just think it's going to be kind of a more of a battle of attrition, right? Who wants it more? Who's, who, who's prepared? Um, correctly in their camp and that's kind of what I think it's gonna come down to it's, it's probably gonna be a potential fire of the year candidate if you ask me I was gonna be so pumped no I was gonna say man I mean both of you guys both have finishes in a lot of your fights and I feel like this is gonna be an all-out war between you two I mean I don't know if it's gonna go down to the scorecards or if it's gonna be a finish but I I guarantee that this is gonna be a fight that everyone's gonna be talking about on this UFC card that's what I hope, you know, I, w I want to go in there and I want to deliver performances that fans remember, you know, yeah. kind of like the, the fights I remember watching growing up in the sport, you know, the Forrest Griffin, Stephen Bonner fight classic, the Robbie Lawler, Rory McDonald fight yeah. classic, you know, um, I want to deliver those fights that, you know, last through time and, you know, people constantly go back and say, have you seen Adam versus Mike Malott, you know, and that's yeah. what I want. Yeah, where did that mentality come from for you? Is that from being a fan? Because you see a lot of guys, they just want to step into the cage, do their thing. Um, and, and you have a wrestling background. You know, wrestlers sometimes have that reputation of the more plotting fights, but it doesn't seem like you have that mentality. Where do you think that comes from for you? Just the competitor in me. Um, it's just, yeah, the competitor in me and just, um, I don't know, the want to just, put somebody like a smile on somebody's face to to bring joy to to their night you know um to be a little bit uplifting even though we're in there doing a combat sport and everybody thinks it's this brutal thing you know um yeah i, I don't know i just i want i think that's the way to be remembered right i a lot of fighters are going in there for paychecks and you know they want to be the best well i want to be the best but i also want to you know make memorable fights definitely done that so far yeah 100 percent, 100 percent with your last fight but i mean so we're about two weeks away mm -hmm. just about under two weeks away how's training camp been going for you um what's been like you know your day-to-day -day routine so far in training camp what's what's different with this preparation against mike Malott compared to the other fights um the preparation in this camp isn't far off of what it was in the last camp um you know, it's my daily routine. I'm waking up at like seven. I'm I'm lifting weights by nine o'clock, um, doing a striking workout or a grappling workout by eleven. I'm going home for a little bit of um, you know time off in between. Basically working a split shift, you know. Right. And then I'm back in the gym in the evening, um, running through my my practices there, my intense practices, and so it's basically getting like two a days. Um, in the mornings, you know, 11 o'clock, we, we kind of do more strategy focused stuff, but you know, keep it kind of light since I just like lifted and, um, and or did some cardio um, over at Convergence PT. And so yeah, it's just, it's just basically two a days. Um, every camp is gonna have its ups and downs. You know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a major head case when it comes to camp, you know. I, I could go in there and, you know, do a, five rounds you know and win every round and come out of there with a submission and i'm going to pick myself apart and you know um, i'm going to figure out where i messed up and i'm going to like focus in on that so i'm very lucky to have people around me that are like dude what do you you know come yeah. on settle down you just went yeah. five rounds and everybody else gassed out and you got submissions and yeah okay you got taken down once but you know that's that's the name of the game you know you're going to get taken down you got to get back up so um or you got to reverse the position so yeah it's just been uh you know 
it's always going to have its ups and downs and uh, it's just like you know I have no knowledge of uh, surfing whatsoever but I assume that's what it's like when you're you're out there riding a wave you just got to kind of go with the flow and and uh, you know know at any time it can kind of close up on you and, and ruin your ride so um, you know don't focus on that just focus on getting to the end of it I remember one of our last conversations it, does it do you almost have to ramp down like your training right before the fight like do you or do you want to be like in peak like condition right then because isn't that kind of a balancing act in and of itself 100 percent. i'm uh in our little ramping down stage as we speak um my last hard practice is actually going to be tonight um, there we go going there you know they're going to throw everybody at me and then some and um, after tonight, you know, it'll be um, a little bit more just um, strategical um, and positionally focused, um, a lot less, you know, impact, a lot less live goes. Um, we want to take away any um, potential risk of injury at this point, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the cardio I have now is the cardio I'm going to go in there with and the muscle I'm going to go in there with. I'm not going to build any more of that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just going to be much more focused on the task at hand some positions I think that I can get into and really like seal the deal on the fight and yeah it's all focused for the 20 in order to, for June 10th yeah and that's another thing with training camps too is like the way a bunch of UFC fighters go about it you know they some of them they go hard the entire time some of them don't even spar and then I mean and then I don't know if you guys saw the McGregor documentary I mean Got his freaking pinky toe <laughs> dislocated right yeah. before his Khabib fight. So I mean, that's good that you you know you have it figured out with you know when to go hard and when to not. But uh, you said early, you said in a separate interview that you kind of had a hunch you were going to fight Mike mm -hmm. a lot. What was that hunch? What was your thinking when you saw? I th like you said, yeah, uh, I was interested in this too. Yeah, I'm really interested. Uh, it was a it was another fight night, and uh, me and my girlfriend were sitting there watching the fights, and uh, his fight came on, and. He ended up getting a, an arm triangle in the first round, you know, and uh, we had been, you know, basically, I'd been told, you know, hey, be prepared. They might want you for a quick turnaround since your last one, and I hadn't heard anything. And at this point, like, I'm like, I bet you, you know, he just got an early finish. I just got an early finish. I could see them trying to put us on a card here pretty quick, you know. Yeah. And so I, I told her, I was like, I bet you they're going to call me for a fight against this guy in the next, you know, couple weeks. And it didn't end, up, didn't end up being a couple of weeks. It ended up being like a, a month or two out. But uh, just seeing him get an early finish and knowing I got an early finish, uh, and we were, he was one week after me, so um, I just had this this vibe that we would be getting a call for a fill-in fight. Maybe something would fall off. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that they were going to bump us to a, a, a main card um, in Vancouver. Um, I know that he's a, a you know a hometown Canadian, you know, and so maybe that's why we got the push over to go there since uh, Stephen Thompson and uh, My Michael Pereira fell off. But mm -hmm. um, you know that's a dream come true to be on a main card. That's where I want to be. That's where the most eyes are going to be on you. Um, that's where you can uh, potentially put yourself in for some fight of the night bonuses. And you were, and I mean, like you mentioned before, I mean, he is going to be a hometown. The the crowd's going to be on his side. But you've been in this position before in enemy territory, deep in there. So I mean, what's this mentality going into this fight? I mean, obviously you want to, you know, you said you've had people doubt you in the past. You want to, you know. Yeah, they keep putting you in this role. Yeah, they keep He's putting you in that enemy maker, territory man. role. And you keep making uh, people a lot of money with yeah. that underdog stat. This is uh, this is your typical Adam Fugit fight, you know. <laughs> yeah, you don't hear my name without thinking of me as the underdog and yeah. going into enemy territory, you know. And uh, at this point, I just thrive on it, you know. Um, I think at the beginning of every camp, I'm like, man, they're really going to doubt me again. They're going to be that stupid, you know. Okay, um, let's just go in there and show them again you know yeah. and i've just fallen into this very comfortable spot with it i like playing that role i think it's another way to get remembered like you know um, it's another way to garner a lot of fans when you you screw up the vegas uh, odds makers bets mm -hmm. you know um, another thing i like doing is putting money in people's pockets so yeah i'm excited and uh you know it's just another opportunity for me and it's a, a bigger opportunity it's, it's a main card you know um, yeah third fight in the UFC and to tell me I was going to have a fight on the main card like I wouldn't have believed you I, I figured I'd be you know down around the beginning of an apex card or right. or something you know or a fight night you're still on cloud nine with that feeling man just knowing <laughs> that you're on a main card I, it's it's surreal it really yeah. is you know um 
walking out there the first time against Michael Morales, you know, you're, you're the, like the third fight on the card and, you know, there's, there's people trickling in, but it's not, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's still not. Still getting their popcorn, still getting their soda. That's that right, stuff. you know. They, we, we got to use the bathroom before the main card comes up, you know. Uh, and so knowing I'm going to be walking in there and it's probably going to be the fullest, you know. Butts are going to be in seats. Yeah. And they're going to be rooting for them. And I want to, you know, I want to go in there and I want to put on a performance for those cheeks in the seats. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the cheeks in the seats. Cheeks in the seats. That would be the title of this episode, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you just gave us a, a, a perfect title there. But there's a, a lot of similarities between um, you guys, and, and we've touched on a few of them. But you both fought Solomon Renfro mm-hmm. to kind of get into the UFC. He did to get in the Contender Series. That was your big fight. That was uh, supposed to be Solomon Renfro's uh, big tryout fight, and you've ruined that um, yeah. in the Buffalo area. So does that help you at all, having a common opponent to kind of analyze it all? Ah. I don't really think of it in those terms. Um, I've studied a lot of his fights, you know, um, and I just try to find tendencies. I try to, to find things that he likes to do, um, you know. Um, I don't really look at the opponent so much. It's like, you know, because your game plan can change from each fight. And, I, and, I, and that's what I think about um, when I'm fighting, you know, and trying to be a melting pot with, you know, it's like, which one of my tools is going to best help me in, against this guy, you know, and, and how can I uh, see what he likes to do and put those tools in motion, basically. That makes sense. You do have a lot of these tools. You know, you got your Muay Thai, you got your wrestling, you got your grappling. What's one aspect of your fighting your style or whatever that you want people to notice on that night against Malad? Uh, there isn't really one aspect, you know? Um, I, I want to be that guy that is, is known that uh, for his versatility. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, I want to be known as the melting pot, the guy that's, that, that has the, the bag of tools that can pull it out, you know, um, you know, basically wherever the fight takes it. So I, I'm not looking to get this fight any specific spot. Um, I know that um, basically I want to operate on my own terms, you mm-hmm. know, um, and that's going to be a, a major key for me in this one. Yeah, that kick. Your kicks have been uh, nuts. The teep, right? Yeah, the teep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah. The yeah. teep, the round kick that the, the slowed Solomon down. Um, yeah. I was watching your fight, uh, your last fight last night, and of course there's that pivotal moment. Um, a minute in, you yeah. take that kick, yeah. but you take him down right away. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was such a crazy um, momentum shift. Is that just the type of adversity? Is that something you could prepare for, or is that just something that has to come in the cage? Because that was a crazy swing in that fight. You right. know, I think that might have been the difference in that fight, honestly. Definitely. You know, he was getting really comfortable in his range. Um, Hence getting, you know, the kick, taking the t- kick. Um, he was getting comfortable with his pace and his range. And, you know, just have to, you got to put him on their back foot a little bit. You got to make him second guess. I constantly, uh, you know, preach to my fighters, you know, when, when they start getting comfortable, we have to start giving them negative repercussions for, for doing things. And, you know, um, if you're just going to try to march into my space, you're going to, you, you might march too close and find yourself, you know, with me on your legs, uh, or if you if you, you hang back a little too far, you might be catching you know the kick, you know. It's like when I go over on time and Danny has to give me that that negative reinforcement <laughs> of yelling in my yeah. ear, you know. He's got to put me in my place. That's it's the right. same thing in the cage. So similar yeah, to the world. In the game. Let me pick your brain a little bit. So what I've seen with other fighters is when they're in the cage, some of them have had so many different experiences. One of one I've seen that's kind of been a little common uh, is they kind of have like an out of body experience. Like they kind of see themselves from like a bird's eye view. Like Corey Sanhagen mentioned, like when he's in a fight he literally sees himself like from like the outside of it. What about you when you're in like the cage, like what's going through your head? Really the last couple of it's just, you mentioned like the fans are going to be there and you know, yeah. it's, it's his hometown and you know, you're going to get booed as well. Um, it's to me, it's just like we're, <laughs> there's nothing outside of the cage. It's, it's pretty much all black. You know, there's, there's, I, I just don't hear any of that. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, I don't know. I, I guess you can kind of compare it to those, uh, those sports movies where the music gets real quiet and it's kind of got that Everything. echo effect, yeah, you know, yeah, and that, yeah. that, that's for me kind of what I go into, you know, there you go. it's just really like filtered tunnel vision, you know, and, um, 
it's just me and that person in there. It's it's, it's almost kind of intimate, you know. And it's it, like it, cinematic almost. Yeah. It, it really feels like, like you mentioned movies. Does it feel like you're like in a Rocky movie almost? <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of what it feels like, you know. Um, just They're definitely trying to make them the Rocky with all these uh, fights in enemy territory. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you, got a, uh, you got a walkout song picked for this fight? Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Deliverance from Bubba Sparks again. Uh, it's been kind of my go-to. There um, you go. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've had it for forever. I, I just like the the vibes to it, and it's got you know, it's not one of those songs that start out real slow. Um, I don't know maybe the fans will catch on one of these days, and the, the thunderclap will start happening. You know? <laughs> Ooh, uh, that'd be great. Maybe you know? a few more fights in. You, so many times, I feel like Anderson Silva had that. It's like a hype song, yeah. but it builds up all the way until they're at the cage, That's and right. the, the the beat doesn't drop until they're like fighting yeah. practically. I yeah. like that. I like you look that. at like Tui Vasi, he's coming out to like Spice Girls, and he's trying <laughs> yeah. to get the crowd all excited and hyped up, and he's doing shoeys and everything. Yeah. But uh, going back to Vancouver, shoeys messed up. The shoey is still messed <laughs> oh, up. I would say a little the, toe jam with your alcohol. Everybody yeah. loves it. The worst is when he grabs another person's yes, shoe. That's like, at least do your own shoe, but he'll grab another dude's I'm like, you don't know where that foot's been. No. The crazy thing is it probably raises the alcohol content somehow, you know? With all the germs mix in. That's a, that's yeah, a, that's yeah, a yeah. cocktail. And a that's messed up. That's um, messed up. So you, we've mentioned already multiple times, you know, you're going to be in enemy territory, but mm -hmm. this is not your first time in Vancouver. You no. had your amateur Muay Thai mm -hmm. start in Vancouver. How does it feel now going from there, going to like almost like full circle? <sighs> I love it. Um, it was actually like last year we went up to Tacoma to do a Muay Thai fight for my girlfriend and um, the trainer that basically said, you know, hey, Adam, we got Adam a fight up here, send him up. Um, at the time, my trainer, he couldn't make it up with me. So he's like, don't worry, I will corner Adam, which he's, uh, you know, very um, just authentic classic old Thai guy that you know it, he doesn't do these kinds of things you know he doesn't he doesn't coach other athletes he you know um, he basically took me in and he said you know I'll be in your corner don't worry and so we went up to Tacoma and saw him and I hadn't seen him in like five years and first thing he you know does is oh my champion and That's gives awesome. me this big hug so I'm excited to get back up there where my Muay Thai career started essentially, you know, and get back in that, that, um, you know, just that culture of Muay Thai that Vancouver has. It's so strong up there and see, you know, potentially even see uh, master song, uh, again, you know, up there, maybe he goes out to the fights or maybe I gotta go visit his, uh, his little gym there in, in Vancouver, BC and, and see how he's doing. But, um, I'm just, it, it's, it just feels like perfect timing, you know, yeah. it's all coming back full circle. Yeah. You know, um, this is something, you know, UFC has been a dream of mine and now that I'm accomplishing it and being able to go back there in Vancouver where it all started, it just, yeah, like I said, it feels You know, I'm going to push back a little bit too. You know, we're saying you're in enemy territory. He's the Canadian. He wanted, you know, he was one of the guys pushing. Yeah. But we're in the Pacific Northwest, baby. That's right. This is also your back... <laughs> Your backyard too, yep. and I think you're gonna have your fair share of fans too in the building. I think so. I think so. I think uh, I think a lot of uh, I, I just know that there's a big fight following up there, and I think a lot of those those fans that watch those two fights um, in Muay Thai, you know, and have kept up with it, um, I'm yeah. sure they're gonna be there cheering for me. So. It, it feels like enemy territory, but it also feels like home to me. So. We're on our side, baby. Yeah. We're yeah, on the no, West 100%. Coast right I feel now. like the Pacific Northwest doesn't get enough credit for MMA. No. I mean, you talk about Muay Thai up in Vancouver, even here in Eugene, the amount of gyms that are here in Eugene, mm -hmm. you know, we've got Art of War, we got Autos. It blows my mind that it's like, I mean, we have Florida, we have, you know, the West Coast down in, down in San Diego and everything like that. Yeah. But I feel like, like, I mean, Pacific Northwest, I feel like it, it needs more credit, you know? 100%. And that's, I mean, that hence why I've, uh, you know, I've made a commitment to pave the Oregon Trail here. You know, we d we have so many good fighters, you know, from so many good gyms, like you mentioned, you know, Performance Grappling, another one, 10th Plant Springfield, another one. Yeah. Um, you know, there's so many great gyms here and so many good fighters. Kevin Bohm, he finally made it to Bellator. Um, Christopher San Jose, you know. Um, my guy, you know, that's my he, guy. He's, he's your guy and honestly, he was right there um, knocking at the door. He's a beast, man. And got, uh, you know, um, unfortunately didn't get into the Ultimate Fighter House, which, um, you know, Dana White, UFC, if you guys watch this one, you know, you guys, I, I think he had the winner of the UFC, or the, the Ultimate Fighter right there. I think that he beats uh, the guy that won at 35, you know, nine out of 10 times, you know? Um, yeah. But 
yeah, so we got plenty of great fighters. We got plenty of, of people up and coming, you know. Before me, there's Evan Dunham, there's Brent Primus, obviously uh, Colby Covington's from Springfield, you know. There's plenty of talent here, and I just, you know, I'm sick of our guys having to go other places to these bigger gyms. And with bigger gyms comes its own flaws, you know. It's a, it's, 100%. It's kind of like a shark tank or a, you know, it's, you go there and it's just a, it's a, a lot of guys in the room that uh, are, you know, they're looking to make their shot and they're mm -hmm. willing to go through anybody, even, you know, quote unquote teammates. They say you don't have teammates in MMA, but like if you're going to a gym, you, you build friendships and stuff. But, and, and so I, I hate when these guys go away to these bigger spots and they, you know, their careers get ruined because of injuries in the training room, you know? Um, it's, almost, so. it's almost like school, right? Where it's like sometimes having the smaller class and getting the attention from your professor, your teacher, or whatever, versus getting lost in the shuffle when you have like 50 kids in there and you're maybe not getting that attention, right? Exactly. And with that in mind, I mean, what's made you stick with Art of War compared yeah. to any of the other fighting issues, whether there's a bunch in Portland, here in Eugene itself, or anywhere else in the Pacific Northwest, what about Art of War sticks out so And, much and do you get calls like from other gyms to come train with them, that type of thing? Uh, that's just not, you know, that's not me, you mm -hmm. know? I, I, I don't get calls for, um, sponsors and other gyms and, and stuff. I, I don't know. Um, I, th I think I'm just quiet and, you know, um, I don't know. I, 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 I just don't, I guess I don't send those vibes out, you know? Yeah. So no, I don't get those things. Um, I did try um, out and go to Vegas um, one year and decided to go try the, the bigger gym thing. And it's like you said, you know, you got too many classmates to one teacher. Mm -hmm. So you either, you don't get the um, attention mm -hmm. that you need, so you're not getting the development, or um, there's only so many techniques that can be taught, you know, and if your coach isn't constantly, you know, the coach has got a, a more of a job than just running a practice, right? They, they should also be a student. And so what I think with some of these bigger gyms is these coaches, these bigger gym coaches, they, um, they kind of start settling on the things that they know because there's only so many hours in a day. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they have to run a practice. They always have fighters in camp, you know, um, so which takes up a ton of time, you know. Um, Jason gives me all his time and energy. Cobb yeah. gives me all his time and energy. Um, Chris, likewise, you know, um, and both of my wrestling coaches that I have at Art of War right now, it's when my training camp comes up, it's all about my fight you know and um there's no other outside attention or it's just directly everybody's working for the for you know june 10th and yeah. i love that and, and let's meet this team because you know that's the cool thing about adam is he's local this guy went to willamette yeah. you train downtown so this is a guy you could see on the street he hasn't left eugene he's homegrown and, and still here so it's kind of Meet the team um, mm -hmm. over at Art of War. So yeah. you, you mentioned Jason Georgiana, right? Correct. He's your head coach. Yep. Um, what is what makes him special as a coach for you? And, and and is he the he's the main guy? Like speaking in your corner, would you say like the main main voice? Or there's kind of a give and take there. It's a collective, you know. Yeah. Um, Jason's the Jason's the guy probably that has the um, the mic on. You know, um, he's been in my corner ever since I started um, my MMA. You know, um, and you know he's just he's like you said he's a head coach and he is the prime example of what a head coach should be you know he he makes sure that all the other coaches are are working together and cohesively you know he he's making sure that i'm getting into each one of my practices on time you know he, he's really you know he's i don't want to say micromanager but he's definitely kind of like the micromanager making sure all the details. parts are working right all the little, little intricate details yeah. You know, and um, you know, it, without him, it, it's going to be a little bit more chaos. You know, um, maybe we don't get started on time in a Muay Thai practice because we're over there, you know, chit chatting and stuff. You know, um, he just really he's accountability mm. for sure. Yeah. So I go into the gym sometimes. I haven't been in a while. I got a bum knee right now. But uh, Chris San Jose, who we mentioned, he uh, he tortures me in there sometimes. You'll see me uh, huffing and puffing. Um, Hasn't made that much of a difference in the physique, you know, because I got <laughs> you, you can't go to P.F. Chang's and, and work out and expect it to uh, to pay off. But I've I was, calories in versus calories out. my yes, friend. <laughs> yes, I, I really need to learn that. I'm like, man, I trained once a week for a month. Why don't I have the, the, the six pack yet? Um, but really, really good. 
environment in there. So, so Chris is going to be in your corner yes. as well. Um, he seems like a very calm guy, um, very chill guy to have in your corner. 100%. You yeah. Know, um, just stoic, calm demeanor. You know, he's, he's going to be, um, you know, kind of like quarterbacking the, the, the stand-up for me, you know. Um, he's going to make sure that I'm not overcommitting, not making mistakes, you know. Um, yeah, he's, he, he's the dude that I'm going to rely on heavily in the stand-up uh, portion of the fight. And we all know that that's where the fight starts, you know, it's on, on the feet. So very crucial to uh, have somebody you trust in there, you know. Um, and he's been working closely with uh, Cobb Tongsai, my Muay Thai instructor for years, um, who can't make this one, unfortunately. But, um, you know, so it's nice to have that immediate, you know, person I can, you know, fall back on when the, the, the main coach can't be there. So you, see, you, you have all your coaches that are going to be coming up there with you. But I also saw, I did a little homework, and I saw that your girlfriend was there at your last fight. Mm -hmm. How is that having her with you? Because there's other UFC fighters where they're like, once training camp starts, their wife and kids are just <laughs> not even, they don't exist. They might Neglected. as well be single for the whole training camp. But it seems like your girlfriend's very involved. I mean, obviously she also trains as well. So how is it that relationship with her, you know, whenever you're, you know, getting into training camp and stuff like that? I mean, she, she also trains and she also fights. She's, yeah. you know, um, I don't know, I'm gonna hype her up. She's the best amateur female, you know, in the, I, I believe in the Pacific North, Northwest right now. Um, she's been off with uh, school for this last year, but she's getting ready to, to start back up. Mm -hmm. um, she's been really working hard in the gym, you know, basically just trying to, to develop her skills. So yeah, maybe she'll be here talking to you at the, um, in the future, special, you know? yeah. that would be cool. <laughs> I mean, th that would be awesome. I'm not sure I knew that. Yeah. Um, do you guys like spar against each other? Get all that going? <laughs> of course, you know, yeah. any, any healthy relationship style, yeah. that, right? <laughs> involves putting on the gloves and fighting. that's <laughs> right. Uh, but to answer your question, she is uh, a first off, there's no stopping her. She's definitely gonna be up there the yeah. week of the fight. You know, I couldn't tell her no by any means, and I wouldn't want to tell her no. Um, she's She's, uh, you know, um, cliche, but she, she's the rock, you know, that kind of keeps my, my uh, mentality together. Like I said, I'm a little bit of a head case, you know, I can be hot and cold at any moment. And mm -hmm. so she, you know, she keeps me even keel. Um, and, you know, when push comes to shove, if, if I need anything or need a moment, you know, to t you know just by myself, um, all I got to do is look at her and give her the old code word and she's kicking everybody out of the of the room and yeah, giving yeah. me my space cool. and so quite literally kicking everyone out exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you don't want those hands or those kicks no, you know? 100%, 100%. that's cool that you have someone that that understands intimately like what the fight game's like she understands what it's like to be punched in the face i mean that's that's pretty cool to have that you know yeah. that understanding and that connection of of doing the same thing right yeah it's i mean it's been uh it's been awesome. We actually just celebrated our, our two years. Oh, um, there you go. Congrats. congrats. Yeah. Congrats, man. Yeah. So um, it's been it's been awesome. Well, I think something else we definitely want to hit, uh, especially for our local audience, is, is your time at Willamette um, in, in wrestling. Um, tell us how you got into that and kind of the impact that that, that had on you. <laughs> I mean, that that kicked everything off right there. Um, I was always just a hyper um, kid, you know, um, that was very athletic, mm -hmm. played a lot of sports, you know. Um, had a, I don't know, personality that was a little quiet, but you know, I don't know, I think also rubbed people the wrong way, you know. Um, you know, not, let's just say, I didn't get along with everybody was all the, the time. Boy, well, anyway. I was not the bad boy, <laughs> it was quite the opposite. I was quiet and I just, you know, um, yeah. And I found wrestling and um, Rick O'Shea was my, my wrestling coach, huge, huge um, part of my life, you know, helping me uh, grow as a man. and. And, uh, you know, just I just knew the second that I, I stepped on those mats and, and felt that kind of competition, you know, where it's you versus somebody else mm -hmm. and the time and the effort and the preparation put in is going to, you know, directly affect the outcome of that um, event, you know. Um, I don't have to rely on anybody else. There's not, you know, five, ten other teammates on the field, you know, that have to do everything right all the time, you know. there's. There's none of that, you know, there's not gonna be any hostility. So yeah. um, I just, I immediately realized like, I had avoided trying to go on the wrestling mats. My dad had been trying to get me to go on the wrestling mats since like, I don't know, I was seven or eight and I, I never made it out. And 
so I just realized right then and there, I was like, man, I avoided something for so long that it's going to be so awesome for me moving forward and just knew right then and there that that's, you know, I had found something that really made me um, kind of whole and complete. Was your dad a wrestler or did you have any other like family members that were really into wrestling, whether it was like high school, college or anything like that or any fighting in general? Uh, my dad will tell you he wrestled one year in, uh, in high school and then, uh, you know, kind of gave up on it. Um, but he always tried to coach me off of that one year. <laughs> Classic uh, dad. Man. Love you, dad. Uh, but yeah, you know. Uh, Classic dad. Man. No, no, nobody else really. Um, and my family was into wrestling. Actually, my, my grandpa was all, he, he still does. He's always watching the, the WWF or at the time it was WWF. Yeah, it's yeah. WWE now. Um, and so, you know, about seven or eight, I thought that's what wrestling was, right, you know, right, and, right. you sure. know, wanted to be like Brett the Hitman Hart, shout out to the Canadian, uh, or, <laughs> you know, um, a Shawn Michaels or something, you know, and that's what I thought wrestling was, yeah. you know, and then to, to step out there on the mat and they throw a singlet at you and you're like, <laughs> yeah, what, what is, is this? What, what is, is the sweet chin music? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I can't pedigree anyone. When can I get on the top of the ropes and fly <laughs> off of this <laughs> right. thing, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> That's awesome. You got anything else for him? You got to get to some other interviews over here, but this was awesome. How are you ending the night on June 10th? Yeah. Perfect world. <laughs> it's going to be late. You know, we're, we're on the main card. Um, everybody is always like, oh, what do you do afterwards? And this last time we got out of there soon enough because uh, it was um, it was sped up, right? Because yeah. we they wanted to have it on like Korean time, essentially. And uh, so we were able to like go out and club uh, in Vegas and I realize I'm, I'm not, the not club, a club guy, not the club guy, Fair enough. you Fair know, enough. give me a, give me a dive bar where some greasy nice. food is or something, Jackalope. you know, Jackalope <laughs> lounge, bro. Oh, I mean, man. The Jackalope lounge when you get back, <laughs> we'll see after that's a party. lock, that's a lock. So we will see what's over open in Vancouver, BC. Um, after it's all said and done, um, I'm definitely going to be getting some, some food um, there you go. afterwards, you know, probably a little bit of a, a Dr. Pepper or something, you know, nice. um, but, uh, yeah, uh, most likely we'll be doing something the the following night, which I think I come back er, uh, like afternoonish that day, so I don't get an extra day in Vancouver, which is kind of a bummer. But mm -hmm. we're coming back early, so maybe I'll be downtown somewhere. Um, oh, there, there you go. go. You're gonna yeah, see him out go. on the streets. I know. love that. And then one last that. thing, I'm gonna pull like a schmo kind of thing where he does the music. But do you have anything you want to say to your fans? Anything? Uh, the camera's all yours. <laughs> say to my fans uh i'm gonna plug my gym art of war mma i'm gonna plug uh convergence pt with tyler tanaka um last year um i was very banged up and injured and um, probably would not be here right now if i hadn't stumbled into his uh his spot you know down there um gosh dang it park street i think south park street mm -hmm. Um, over by Palace um, Cafe, um, he's he's the man. If you're looking for physical therapy as an athlete, if you're looking for strength training, he's running strength training as well. Um, so go pop in there, and he's going to give you the best version of yourself. I've definitely seen the improvements. Um, I'm just going to tell my family I love them. Um, tell the city that uh, I'm going up to Vancouver again. I'm most likely the underdog, so. Um, if you uh, are doing any kind of sports betting, I love upsetting the Vegas odds makers. Yeah. And, uh, He's made people some money. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, at least tune in, watch me, and uh, be sending positive vibes because I'm looking to put on a show. This is going to be awesome. Nine and three, Adam Fugit making your third appearance in the UFC. That is crazy to say. <clears throat> He's fighting out of Eugene. When you hear that, fighting out of Eugene yeah. for Bruce Buffer, whoever's announcing, has to feel good That's for right. you. The Eugene guy through and through fighting Mike Malott, nine one and one in the cage. This is going to be a barn burner. If you've seen this guy fight, you know you're getting your money's worth. This is gonna be so much fun. June tenth, UFC two eighty nine. Tune in. Gonna be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for being here right yeah. now on the TD show. Yeah. Appreciate your Thanks time. Thanks for having man. me, guys.